Well, we're so happy to have everyone here. Um, we're going to uh, start with, with a poll. Uh, Barbara Jean has a couple questions for you all. So if you uh, would like to uh, go ahead and answer those for her, that's going to help sh her shape this conversation today. Now serving K zero one one. So this will we'll leave this open for about uh, two minutes or so. Um, and uh, Barbara Jean's coming to us from Georgia, and uh, she had an entire presentation ready for us. And then yesterday, it all kind of got re-scrambled <laughs> with, with the new, with the new uh, guidelines. So uh, we, it is a moving target, and I think that is the theme of today's presentation. And welcome to all the brand new faces uh, that are on the, on the call today. So we'll keep the poll open for about another 30 seconds. Leah, uh, Doc, uh, Dean Dobson, would you like to do a say hello to everyone? Yeah, I just would like to say uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Everybody, it's great to see that you're um, all still with us and engaging with the Collins College. Uh, everything's going great, and um, uh, we look forward to more of these. Uh, we are going to be going on virtual uh, instruction again in the fall in a couple of weeks. So um, uh, just hang in there with us, and, and we'll continue to have great gatherings like this. Thank you for being here, and thank you, Barbara Jean. Appreciate your uh, willingness to present to us today. My pleasure, ma'am. Thank you. All right, so 22 out of the 26 of you voted, so thank you. I'm gonna end the poll. Um, can you, oh, let's see, share results. All right, so now you should be able to see 50, we're about half and half for dine-in. Excellent. Well, that is, that's actually half and half. Yeah. Okay, and then like majority you got excellent, uh, you're satisfied, good average, 50%, and most of you have not been um, doing any uh, contact tracing, so 90% of you. That's an interesting, that is a very interesting, timely, I like, okay, excellent, excellent, no contract, track, contact okay we'll get to that one in a little while I'm taking notes by the way okay all right so Barbara Jean you want to share share your screen and get started yes ma'am oh okie dokie uh, let's go to here so my presentation is on restaurant service essentials and it is my pleasure in a COVID-19 world because we are in hospitality. I want to start with this and I hope that you can hear it. Okay, did y'all hear that? Okay, make it go away. Um, I hope that you heard what song that was. Did anybody hear what song that was? That was, it's the end of the world as we know it because our world did end. And I'm gonna come back. Um, oh, am I on, should I be on mute? I'm, in, I'm, I'm echoing. Okay, I'm not echoing now. Um, so if we go back to Friday the 13th, and this is just a real snapshot, ironic that it was Friday the 13th, is that we were doing fine. The hospitality industry was just booming. Keep on going. Everything was fine. And then things shut down and literally shut down. Um, and so I, I don't know how many of you have watched Data Essentials from the National Restaurant Association or binge watching all of the, the uh, information and such like that. And this was long before I knew I was going to do this, but it was just so fascinating to see what was happening with our industry. And for this one specifically, uh, 
was that when you looked at how do you feel, and these, these are polls in March, right? So this was uh, March the 25th through June the 8th. How do you, uh, when do you feel it'll be safe to go out to eat at a restaurant again? On March the 25th, there were 10% that said yes. On June the 28th, uh, June the 8th, it was only 23, which is why it correlated with that poll to find out, okay, well, this is what it said then. What did y'all say, right? Now it's half and half. So when you think about where we are and where we're coming and where we're going, um, those statistics are very interesting to see. Again, um, have you been to a restaurant in the past two weeks? I would highly recommend y'all going on to Data Essentials. It's a fast, fast uh, uh, it's every, every other Thursday now. But anyway, um, it was uh, in restaurant experience, at that time, 71% had been to a restaurant in the past two weeks, okay? And 89% were very satisfied with their recent experiences. Now, down here, if you look real quick, quick and I'm gonna talk about this in some of the other um, slides and stuff, is that the safety measures, because one of our, the, the talks we're gonna talk about topics is guest safety, and then how do we prevent, how to do crew safety? They wore, get, uh, like wearing gloves, this is the safety measures, um, wore gloves when handing me food. Okay, anybody who went through the restaurant at Kellogg Ranch, you know that gloves is a false sense of security. It still can do cross contamination. I'll get into that in a little while, but from a guest perspective, gloves mean something. The other one, which was really interesting, that gloves were more important at that time, at that time, not necessarily now, I don't think, is that wearing masks when they're handling my food was only 47%, and then contactless payment was 33%. So this was during the lockdown, okay? This was in February, uh, this was uh, 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 May the 8th, so we weren't really all that open yet. Um, I don't think anybody was open at that point, but uh, how, what percentage felt safe safe going um, after the, sh the shelters were, restrict, uh, were lifted, the shelter restrictions were, lift were lifted. Restaurants were the number one thing. It was 63% said, no, we're gonna go to restaurants. Of course they wanted to go to restaurants. People don't go out to eat for a restaurant to satisfy hunger. They go for social things. We are hospitality. The restaurant was so important. All right, so everybody knows that we are the Canary State. That's Georgia. and. Um, Governor Kemp was, we were one of the first, I think it was Texas, I could be wrong, I think it was Texas was the second one that came, or we went right all about at the same time. We went before Florida did, but came very much close after us. And Governor Kemp said, no, we're going to go ahead and open, you know, and we were going to open with not that many restrictions, you know, we were going to be okay, gatherings of 25 people, they were talking about the bars and the nightclubs and all the rest of that stuff. And this was on May the 28th, and we were gonna start on June the 1st. And there were a lot of people who were going, you're crazy. I zoom in with Belle and Scott and um, uh, uh, Donna Del uh, Diane Delanis, and every like Friday we, we uh, go in there, and, uh, um, and they were all going, you're crazy for doing that. Well, of course, I don't have any laws around here, but anyway. And then of June the, the 16th, it came up and Governor Kemp said, there's no longer a limit. We were like, okay, free range chickens, let's go. Ha <laughs> ha, have fun. Oh, people flocked. They flocked. You would not believe how many people were like, Psh, open the floodgates. And that was a little bit of a problem. Of course, who has the crystal ball? Mine broke, obviously. Workers at banquets, workers at restaurants, dining rooms, banquet facilities, private event facilities, private receptions, were only wear, required to wear face coverings when a, interacting with patrons. Did anybody go, no, did they really do that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Bars could now, and again, this is of the 16th, okay? And so you can, and Karen Brenner of the Georgia Restaurant Association was, yeah, this was all, this was all good. She's a doll baby, by the way. She is an absolute doll baby. She, she's a doll baby. Um, because at that point, you didn't know what you didn't know. The, the, the pike, we had started to kind of come down and such like that, and it looked like it was going okay. Um, this, would, this one over here is just, she just put this one up uh, a couple of days ago, I think two days ago, about um, the safety protocols now, because now it's a roller coaster. We're going in and out and in and out. I, I like this one specifically for the deer in the headlights look. Because as I'm doing this presentation yesterday and writing and doing all my, making sure that I've got all this taken care of, 
Governor Newsom said, no, you're shutting down. And everything in Florida, I'm, I'm pointing south from here, is like it's going crazy again, right? And then there's Texas. And so, again, if you look between a four-day difference, how many people were very familiar with coronavirus on March the 10th? It was 58. But, and it's not, a, it's not a big number of a jump, but for four days, it jumped 20%. They started to get in a little bit, and but then they started to get a little bit more familiar with what coronavirus is, and maybe this is real. Um, and that was back in March again. Just remember, back in March, because it gives you about where we were going about at that time. Um, very concerned. How many people were very concerned? Ah, on March the 10th, it was like, well, I'm not really sure about that. And then March the 14th, it would be very interesting. I contacted Jack Lee over at Data Essentials, and I said, are you going to do an update on this? And he said, yeah, probably soon. So um, we are adapting to change, okay? Everybody, ServeSafe came out with a whole bunch of different regulations for different states because we have 50 states in this United States and they are all very different, as you know. I mean, there's California and there's Georgia. You talk about polar opposites. And I, there's times when I do think that we really should shut it down, but I'll get into that one later because I'm not doing politics, I'm doing uh, state uh, service essentials. Um, the, so the states do vary, but they're all talking about the same five things, basically. No sick employees on site, which is true. Um, but I, have you ever thought about if you have a 95 degree temperature or, you know, like a 100, uh, 100 degree temperature, are you really going to go out anyway? Um, prevent on-site transmission, which is a big one. It, enhance cleaning and disinfectants for safety, which is, it's, it's vital. Social distancing, and we're going to get into that one, that name in a little while for low touch dine in, which I know in California is, we didn't, we did, now we're not. And in some places we still are doing dine in. Um, and then take out and delivery, which, you know, okay, for everybody in California that didn't do them before, now at least people know really how to execute this patio dining, which is still okay. And then take out, which is still gonna keep them at least in the marketplace, although they're taking a hit as far as labor costs and everything else. So if you look at this slide, you're gonna see that they're all different. I'm not going through all this, but I just wanted to put it up. You can go to ServeSafe and see this from the National Restaurant Association, that they're all very, very different. Um, so what went wrong? I mean, what, what went wrong? But if you, look at, if you look at here, the inspectors, I'm gonna to try to move this out of the way here. If you look here, that inspectors on June the 27th and 28th, 49% of bars and 33% of restaurants were not adhering to physical distancing protocols, while 54% of bars and 44% of reference, uh, restaurants were not shields. And that was, that was in the LA Times on uh, July the 9th. That was not that far away. So of course he's gonna shut it down. If not, people aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Now I'm gonna, I asked Bell, Bell sent this one up to me and I told her, I said, I don't necessarily wanna know if I really wanna put this one up here because it does have a little bit of a kind of a a-hole word here, but the message is really good. Is that as, and this was posted, she found this one somewhere and she, and it was posted on a restaurant and it was, and you've seen the restaurant signs and such like that, that are telling people, you know, like no gloves, I mean, uh, no shoes, no shirt, no service, well, no mask. Well, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Um, just like you, uh, it, as in a right, as an American, you have a right not to wear a mask, but just like you, businesses have a right not to let you in. Screaming at employees and businesses for protecting their workers and customers does not make you a patriot. It makes you a not nice person. Okay. I'm just going to say that. Then yesterday, Governor Newsom came out and said, squash, we're not doing this. All right. Well, fine. Then that's just, then it is what it is. Okay. So um, the next slide is that we, LA County and Orange County, we're at wars with each other. LA County said, okay, no, we're gonna go really, 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 we gotta stop this. And Orange County is like, mm -mm, we're gonna go for it, right? It's happening over here. If Mayor Bottoms just said, no, we're not, we're gonna cut it down. And Governor Kemp, they're at big wars right now because Governor Kemp says you can't enforce that. And, you know, Atlanta is, um, they've got a lot of restaurants in Atlanta. And so, you know, what do we do? All of this has to do with guests experience. This has to do with service essentials, because if we're not there, how do we, as how do you who are in the industry, how do you give great service when you still have all of this stuff going on? How do you run a restaurant? 
So I think, uh, Anne, we're still going to do the breakout rooms, right? And at this point in time, I am uh, seven minutes over my time, but that's not too bad. Um, the breakout rooms, we're going to go 15 minutes to discuss the, the, these three topics because we want to. I want to see from your perspective, what do you think about this? It's not me sharing information because this information is not new. I'm not adding to the body of knowledge. I'm not in the industry. I'm not in California. All I am is here in, in South Metro Georgia. It's not, it's, you know, like if you were in San Clemente, I'd like to be in San Clemente right now. Um, but anyway, uh, so, uh, Anne, you want to take it away? Yes. So I'm typing those three topics you, into muted? the chat. Anne, did I unmute you? Hopefully I'm not muted. Can you, yeah. So I'm typing the three topics in, there you are. Um, well, I was typing the three topics. So what are the three topics for averaging guest safety, protecting you and your team while providing an excellent service and what else? Anne Darlin, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? No? Okay, well, we'll go to breakout rooms. Oh, thank you, Casey. Only you can't hear me, Barbara Jean. <laughs> um, uh, okay, oh, perfect. Um, I would put two, uh, two of the three topics in, because I don't know what the third one was, um, into the chat. And then I will do breakout rooms of... No, I can hear you. It's called turn my thing back on. <laughs> Oh, um, very nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to do um, four to five people per room, and uh, we will send uh, you to breakout rooms to discuss those topics. So, Barbara Jean, what were the three topics? Guest safety, protecting you and your team, and what was the third one? Yeah, let me get back to that. You want me to go back to screen share? Uh, here. Here you go. It was guest safety. What are your thoughts on guest safety? What are your thoughts on protecting you and your team while providing excellent service? And what does table touching nowadays mean to you? I mean, we had sequence of service. What does it mean to you now? Okay, perfect. So Great. I will send you off to, um, those are your three topics. We will send you off for how long, Barbara Jean? I think we just said like, uh, what, 10 minutes? And then we come back for five for a uh, wrap up. And then, and then I'll go into my findings. Perfect. All right. And I'll come around and visit the rooms uh, as well. So here we go. I, I felt so bad closing the rooms. Every conversation I was, was in was, it was amazing. And I think you all could have gone on for quite, quite a bit more time. So Barbara Jean, do you want to take, take, take over and give us some recaps or what would you, how would you like to proceed? Yeah, let me, um, let me see how I can get back to sh share screen. I'm a mess. Okay. Am I there? Okay. Yeah, I am. Well, yeah. Okay. I am and I'm not. Why? Okay. But I don't want to be there yet. I want to be here. All right. Um, for me hopping in and out, and I need to make this really quick. For me hopping in and out, y'all are going to hit injury, especially I'm talking about contract tracing in a, little, in a couple of the slides and stuff like that. But what we're going to do um, is, do y'all want to give like real quick Maybe somebody say just a, a quick snippet, one sentence on what y'all found, and then I'm going to move into my uh, my presentations and such. How do you want to do that? Yeah, so I don't, group one, does group one, oh, Margie Jones raises her hand. Yes, Margie. Margie raises her hand because, you know, all the good ideas will come. At, at <laughs> one of the best ideas that came out of our group was this guest safety situation. Um, the fact that people at home with small children are probably some of the people who need the opportunity to dine out more than anybody else. But the challenge of the safety and sanitation with small children who don't have enough knowledge to not touch things and not put their hands in their mouths is a real challenge for our industry and, and their fam the family in general. So it may be keeping them from it. Thank you, Margie. Yes, group one, if I can speak, uh, we talked about really all three of the topics, um, keeping the team members safe by having them wear masks at all times and not in terms of um, touching tables, 
not spending a lot of time at the table, just handling business, uh, doing your check backs, uh, taking the order, uh, reading the guest's face to see if they actually even want you at their table. Um, you can you can get that sense as well because as we know when they're at the table they're not eating, um, and then of course protecting your team member, making sure that they have temperature checks on a daily basis. Uh, if someone does test positive, that they're quarantined for 14 days and so forth. So that was uh, group one. Awesome. Thank you, Thank Leslie. You. Good seeing you. About group two. Any other groups want to share out? You all had amazing conversations. I'll okay. represent group four. If awesome. We'll get out of order. But um, our group uh, shared some of the same sentiments that Leslie and Margie pointed out. Um, we have experienced, or we, you know, in our visits, mm -hmm. we've experienced deterioration in service where, you know, the server doesn't seem to be coming over, uh, it doesn't seem to be engaged in uh, providing service. There isn't, um, you know, the a happy server coming to your table anymore, except for the quick service industry. We, we felt that, you know, in food restaurants there was a little bit more happiness uh, in terms of service but uh, how much happiness can there be when you're delivering a paper menu and to a bunch of people that are afraid of eating in that restaurant right so um, really the main theme that came out from our meeting was uh, aren't comfortable serving because they don't, there's a little bit of an unknown factor that am I serving someone who is infected himself should I and that concern also um, goes over to management that is, if I raise my hand and say I'm a little under the weather today uh, and, I do that enough, and I call off work uh, too many times, am I going to lose my job? So uh, from many different perspectives, there's a little bit of uncertainty still out there and it's affecting service to a, uh, a negative degree. Thank you. Maybe one more, one more last update from one more group. Um, we have a, um, we, we talked about um, visual signs everywhere, no condiments on the table, um, follow certain paths of entry and exit of the facilities or even the bathrooms, um, using QR codes for um, menu reading on the guest's phones instead of using physical menus, um, checking temperatures as uh, guests entering facilities, um, and then, you know, uh, maybe enforcing um, um, contact tracing um, to, to ensure guests and employee safety. Um, and then for the um, team members um, is um, getting tested, um, uh, having contact tracing and wearing masks at all times um, and getting temperature checked on a daily basis as well. And one of the, the things that um, were also discussed is that um, in order to safely dine, um, uh, whether outdoors or indoors, um, masks on the, for the guests are, should, should still be worn when they are not eating. Because, uh, you know, the, um, we would go out as a social um, uh, activity, and, and then when you're not eating, you're speaking with each other um, at the table, even um, uh, uh, within the same table, um, there, if, if somebody has a, um, a systematic, then they cannot um, tell they, if they're carrying the virus or not. So they should be wearing masks in between their courses. And then for smaller spacing facilities, um, there were like plastic barriers um, in between tables. If you're not able to um, keep the tables um, at least six feet apart. So those were the items that we talked about. Thank you so much. Barbara Jean, you want to continue? So, y'all are right. Y'all are serious. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, uh, panel. Uh, the breakout rooms were absolutely, y'all are so spot on. Um, I, one of the things that we had, one of the things that I think some of you had discussed or in, um, in some of the readings that I had done was to get your word out there as soon as possible. Linda Cagle actually got an opportunity to do um, a PSA from uh, Linda could tell you uh, it was a, a, a TV kind of spot that gave them an opportunity to go out and say that we're open, this is where we are, 
and it may have been in the Cucamonga area and such. Um, but it starts with your website. It starts with getting the education out to the guests. And I'm not going to go through all of it. Whisper House just came up with this yesterday. This is from uh, um, Ryan Dudley over at the cellar. And this was at the White House um, from, uh, and it's a video on the White House in Anaheim. And that, y'all should go and try to find that one because it's a whole video on some of the protocols that he has and such like that. Um, Mark Argotten sent me this and their website, they have an entire playbook. I mean, of what they do to keep the guests and the crew safe. And so it's the messages to the messages to the guests and such like that. It starts, and then um, Jacob Scott with the uh, Medicino and such like that. And so it, it starts with, it starts with getting the message out from the, um, from the guests from the websites and stuff like that. Some of the guest protocols, which you had talked about, was again, they talked about uh, providing employees with gloves. From a guest perspective, that means that there's safety. But unless those gloves are getting taken off when, after they're used and then put in a trash can, not in a parking lot, then it's a poll that are you, you know, when will you be, will you dine at some place with a mask? with the servers have masks? And if they don't have masks, would you still dine with them? And the answer is resoundingly no. Um, okay, the majority, there are still those who don't. Uh, when you talk about, um, and then when I go back to that other one, I'll talk, I, I, I missed this one. And Jason Daenerys is on there. When you talk about uh, safety protocols and stuff like that, there's lawsuits now that are coming out because if you get sick from an employee if you're a co-employee and you get sick from that, Jason, what's, what, what's going to go off in that area and such like that? Because there's a lot of litigation that's coming from this. You've got guest safety protocol, which was one of my three points, is that training of the crew is number one. You've got to have communication versus execution. You've got to have that communication to where they understand what it is. We want to be in hospitality, that's true, but we have to provide that safety and the execution of what that is. And somebody was talking about, and I, don't, I think y'all can see this. I hope that, Anne, they can see that to wear a mask when the people are sitting at the tables and stuff like that. Well, this is a, okay, now my internet connection is unstable. Please don't let me lose this sucker. Um, anyway, so then they were talking about some of the other safety guest protocols mm -hmm. is that they, one uh, company in Washington, you talk about how much money you spent in PPEs, they did like a, a TSA scan. So that way you didn't have to have this gun pointed at your head to take your temperature. Mm -hmm. Stability, because somebody else mentioned, mentioned mel uh, mental stability, peace of mind on the menu. They had to scale the menus back because you've got a skeleton crew right now because you don't have the the um, the amount of people that can come in and out. Um, they were talking about taking temperatures, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizing, hand sanitizers at the door as a host. As a, a host, you're the number one person that they see first, and so some of them actually had antibacterial antibacterial masks. Um, to where when you walk in, at least your shoes are, are in sanitized. And um, Leo Yen over in Hong Kong said that they had gone back. They had said that they had had to go back. Y'all know that Disney, Disney Hong Kong just shut down again. Um, no more than four people can sit together in a restaurant. And they're finding people who, if you're out in public, you can be fined $645 U.S. number. Uh, uh, and uh, U.S. dollars, I should say. The Beach Club. Lyra sent me her training manual. We go back to guest safety credit. It's about training and such like that. They have an eight page training manual and you would not believe the training that you have to have. Um, uh, you have to follow all the CDC guidelines and the safe policies. And this one to where somebody, a guest had seen a fire. And they saw someone going out with a whole bunch of food at like, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night. They called and they went and the, 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 some agent went over to where the party was and they fined them X amount of dollars. And that party cost the host like $10,000. And so it is, so there's guest safety protocol, but they have to have regulations or they have to have enforcement or do they again, do they? And how are we going to do that? 
Um, it, we do need to be guest centric because I know like Eddie had said about find out about uh, the service levels because we are losing those service levels. But is that where a happy medium and where we are now? Um, until we get the vaccine, what choice do we have unless it's just to go? The cast, and this came from Michelle Jeanru, the cast, the cast is just as important as the guests because if the guests or the crew, cast, crew, call them what you will, if we can't get it right, then we can't do it to our guests, okay? Um, you have to know how to pivot. Of course, California has been pivoting long. Leslie, you may remember when um, Ariel uh, uh, Weinshanker came up with the QR codes in our KR and we were like, what is this? How would, how would she know to have done this? And look at where we are now with the QR, QR codes. Yeah. Reservation seatings and flowing uh, flows. In some places they actually have, um, they actually have these little buttons now. It, it was in Japan, but then there was another place that I had read just recently that like Eddie, I think it was one of y'all had talked about the buttons to like, hello, I need some service here. But a few minutes and stuff like that. Um, uh, I talked to Steve. This is a global contribution uh, uh, presentation. They have a sanitizing expert in Saudi Arabia that only does sanitizing, okay? That's all he does, or he, she. So I'm, you know, if I had to bring Florida into this, because it's not us, just us that are crazy. Um, although Florida now has woken up because they've got beautiful beaches over there. Um, they do, do you feel comfortable eating or dining at a, a place if the servers or the bartenders don't have masks? Okay, 48% said yes, and 52% said no. And I bet you now it might be a little bit, that was like three weeks ago. What is it now? Okay, and so mask requirements on states, it's not just, and it's a hard thing for us to be able to, um, that was one of the things that I had done in my research is that a lot of hard things for the operators to be now become police. I mean, you have to, you know, like you've seen it on TV where you've had to, you know, tell people, look, if you're gonna get all, why do I have to wear a mask? And I think Brady Main was telling me that they had a mask over, a mask requirement. Linda, I hope I get this right. Brady Main was telling me they had a mask requirement in Cucamonga over at the cask. And a lady and a man came in. The man was wearing a mask. He gave, Brady gave the, um, or the host gave the lady the mask. The lady put it in her pocket. So what are you going to do? Tell them they can't come in? The answer to that is, you know, there's no pat. There's no one thing fits all kind of such like, should it all be yes? Yeah, unless we're not going to get this virus done, maybe we should. Cleaning in, through, in view of guests. The guests, their psychological comfort level is when I actually see you clean that table, makes me feel good. It's called physical distancing, not social distancing. And I certainly do wish I could tell you who gave me that one because it is a big... Barbara Jean, your internet's going out. There it goes. But we just wanted to also give you about a three minute warning as well. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I, okay, so when you talk about there's the, I know it's unstable. There's, I, 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 I deal with this. There's contract tracing and stuff like that. This came from Russ Bendel's. Um, and then the last one we talked about was table touching because, and I got this from, um, I got this from uh, uh, Allie Morin over at uh, Marriott. And we talk about smizing. We talk about talking with our eyes, okay? Because you can, you can see, we talk about eye contact all the time. So here is, how do you smile with a mask on? This is pretty interesting to see that one. Um, we're almost done. And then here is, I think it was Jason actually had that 15-6 rule. Jason Zhang came up with a 15, I think he had one of these, but this is from Marriott. And it talked about how many steps and how many minutes and things like that. I talked about, uh, I think it was one of y'all had talked about how many people, how much time can a server actually stand at a table and talk to them? Um, in Japan, they took buzzers on the tables, but in Oregon or Washington, there's another place that are doing buzzers on the table because the technology is there for it. Um, I think it was Art who was talking about speaking through the mask. I mean, like, can we actually go and talk through that mask? Because you know that it's hard to hear things. 
um, a firm policy on what you can bring to the guest? Is it, you know, there's no more right side, left side. It's basically no more refills. And are the guests really comfortable with that? Because if they, they aren't, they're going to look at that and they're going to go, it's poor service. No, it's not. It's what we have to do now. Um, will people, people will feel, will make sacrifices. And again, this comes to the very kind of the end of the, the slides here is that will people make our guests, will they make sacrifices to dine in, even if it extracts from the experience? And 78%, which were mostly boomers, I guess you can see that 80%, 87% of that 78% said that so to end this and i'm doing okay on time right i'm blitzing through this anyway um hong kong disney did have to close okay just recently they and there's a lot of cities in the united states that are going back to phase one i'm preaching to the choir in california this came out, and I can't remember where this one came out from, and it was uh, from a successful operations will need to play measured approach to both disaster preparedness and recovery with the likelihood of a second wave. We're not out of the first wave yet. Second wave is gonna hit the latter part of 2020. We already know that it's not doing anything as far as heat concerned. New Orleans had a heat record of 104. Do you know what it's like to put your face in front of a boiling water with steam in it? That would be the city of New Orleans. And they've had to the, uh, shut down a whole bunch of stuff. Stop. That's a spoiler alert. Anyway, um, the last slides that I had was sanitation will remain a uh, consideration beyond the pandemic, which is very, very, very true. And how can we be teamwork? to talk about how are we gonna be able to help with the efforts and the recovery and such like that. So on this, I'm gonna end my uh, presentation with a, a thought. I hope you can hear this. I hope I can get it to go. Okay, now. Should I stay or should I go? So there's that. Should I stay or should I go? I want to conclude with, uh, <laughs> this is a, a big thank you for my panel of experts and every last one of them have helped me on this, pro, on, on this, not just us. And always remember, and this was very global. I, I, I spelled New Zealand wrong. Oh, well, um, a crack pot leads to great flowers. And there are many blessings in adversity. Look at what we've done. Where have we come? Um, you can't hold us down. We're hospitality. We're a higher calling. Our sequence of service may have gone away, but our three keys haven't. Y'all remember the three keys? How many of y'all remember these three keys? Exceed guest expectation, provide total support for your staff, and manage the business professionally. And on that note, Anne, and I thank you all for... Uh, putting up with me and, and doing all this. I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all all have my email. It's the same, bjbruin at, at cpp.edu. Thank God for lecture emeritus. And it's all you. I love y'all. Oh, no, wait, wait. I forgot. Wait. Everybody wear a mask. Even when you're pouring Horse Hill in Arboral Vintage, you must wear a mask, okay? And these are now from the Cal Poly Bookstore. They're cheap and they're very wonderful. So there's that. Okay, now Anne, it's all yours. Wonderful, thank you so much, BJ. Um, we are open for questions. So um, if you have questions, you can either unmute yourself and ask, or you can ask them in the chat and I will read them um, out to you. I've also put BJ's email in the chat if you'd like to reach out to her as well. We have about maybe time for about two questions. Lots of thank yous. My pleasure in a COVID world. <laughs> I do have one question if it's okay. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, so I recently started working at a winery and we don't do temperature checks for guests or for uh, crew members. The only thing we're doing is just making sure that we as uh, the crew are wearing masks. And I work in like, it's like an outside pool and bar. 
Um, and so a lot of our guests, like they don't really have their mask on because they're in the pool or they're dining at our little restaurant. So how can I kind of bring up to management, like, hey, maybe we should try and put in more like safety measures, but I'm only two days into the job. So I don't want to start like making big waves and being like that person. Allison, where I, I would I would almost defer this to every one of my panel. This view from that. Um, there is a uh, if if I were you, I would go find out. I, my internet's not stable. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> I hope that you can hear me. First off, I would go find what city you're in what city you're in first. County can bring that up because at this point in time, if I had somebody that came up to me and you can actually put it as far as I'm concerned and everybody tell me if I'm wrong, but if I had a guest, if I had a crew member that came up to me and said that, as long as you know how to phrase it, you know, don't put it that they're doing something wrong. Get your communication right. Eddie, you're a good one as far as communication is concerned. You would probably be able to phrase this really well. Is that how would you tell the guest um, I know, can you give me some advice? Because I have some guests here that aren't doing mandate, that aren't wearing masks, but our city says that we should, and I don't want to get fired, and I want to make sure that we stay open. So can you help me? Put it back on them as far as a help situation. But don't feel bad for, for, uh, for bringing that up, because it's for your protection, for the business's protection, and then also, more importantly, for the guest perception. If anybody else has anything to chime in, please feel free. Kind of passionate about that one, Allison. Good question. Thank you so much for your answer. <laughs> anything else, Anne? I think I think that's about all the time we have to, for today. Um, thank you so much, for everyone, for coming. We have in two weeks, we will have to be an effective job seeker. And then uh, two weeks after that, uh, Eddie will do um, about interviewing. Uh, so um, we look forward to seeing all of you. It's the same link, same time every two weeks on Tuesday at 9 a.m. So you just use the same login information that you've got today. So thank you all so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And thank you, Barbara Jean, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Great job. Good seeing all of you guys.